Hi, I'm Marjola Winley, and I'm in this block 6 our English class. This block you can say. Let me hit him! Alright, slow down, Luke Curly. No, let me hit that big son of a bitch. Ain't nobody getting, a che getting away with the cheap chat on me. What? Well, where am I? That was a mighty big shot you took. He hit you right in the head. You talking about that lucky hit? I'll kill him. You just wait and see. I don't know about that, Curly. He seemed to get the best of you. Is you goddamn out of your mind? I can't wait. I can hit him with one hit. Even with my hand like this. I wouldn't use the Lord's name in vain, especially when you're speaking with him. Hey! What do you mean? I ain't falling for that. I was serious when I said he got the best of you. He killed you with that punch. Now I need to decide if you're going to heaven or hell. Let's look at your life. Do you remember a worker at your dad's farm? He went by the name of Lenny? Yeah, I wanted to kill him for killing my wife. You never seemed to be very nice to anybody. And he never had any bad intentions towards you. Oh, and about your wife. What about my wife? Did you ever care about her? I love my wife. She was only an object that you possessed for your own pleasure. You didn't even treat your own wife with respect. Name one nice thing you did in your life. Hmm. I have, actually. Oh yeah. No. I've done lots of nice things. Then how come you couldn't name any? See, Curly, not once in your entire life have you treated anyone with admiration. And for that reason, I cannot permit you into heaven. Sorry, you had your chance. Hello, Slim. Sorry, your time has come, and you're at the pearly gates. Does that make, make you God? Sure does. Now is the time I will decide if the way you chose to live your life was the right way. And if, and if so, I'll be glad to allow you into heaven. Do you remember while you were working at a ranch in your solo day, California? There were two workers. They traveled together. Yeah, I remember. It's quite unusual. George and Lynn were their names. It's a tragedy what happened to them. Yes, it was sad what George had to do. But how do you think you treated the two of them? Well, I hope I treat them good. I tried my best to help them up whenever I could. You did treat them very well. Whenever a bad situation occurred between the two friends, you always helped them get out of trouble. When Lenny crushed the bones in Curly's hand, you told Curly not to tell the boss what happened to make sure that George and Lenny wouldn't get fired. Your heart's in the right place, Slim. Thank you. That's a mighty fine thing to hear from some, a man like you. I just say what I remember, which is everything, of course. You were a great leader on the ranch. Thank you. Even right when George and Lenny came to the ranch, you welcomed them. It seemed like everyone in the ranch thought you were a good guy. 
You were a humble leader until the day you died. And that is why you are allowed in heaven. In Jonathan Steinbeck's novel, Of Mice and Men, Steinbeck illustrates two characters that both had a leader position but approached their authority in different forms. The bad guy, good guy situation, relationship between Slim and Curly, was Steinbeck's way to show the different components of the world. Slim signified the good, while Curly signified the injustice in society. Curly is the character in the book that is always looking to start trouble. His eyes pass over the new men, and he stopped. He glanced, glanced coldly at George, and then at Lenny. His arms gradually bent at, um, at, bent at his elbows, and his hands closed into fists. The quote from page 25 um, was the reader's first introduction to, Cur introduction to Curly. Immediately, as he sees the new workers, he has hatred toward them. Steinbeck uses the word coldly to show that the glare Curly was giving was more than a normal glare. It was more, more like a glare than just a normal glance. Also, Curly's hands coming into fists show his temper and cockiness towards fighting anyone, no matter the size. The first impression Steinbeck wants the reader to feel is one of dislike towards the corrupt and cold-hearted man. The opposite character to Curly in the book was Slim. The passage on page 34 and 35 let the reader paint a picture of the magnificent leader that is Slim. The passage is very long, so I paraphrased it. He moves with a majesty only achieved by royalty and master craftsmanship. There was a gravity in his manner, and a quite, um, and a quite so profound that all talk supposed, oh, stopped when he spoke. His authority was so great that his, world, that his word was taken on any subject, be it politics or love. His ear heard more than was to be said, and his slow speech had overtones, not of thought, but of understanding beyond that. This shows Slim's, Slim is distinguished far above the normal work farm worker. Steinbeck creates the image of a perfect leader in Slim. The leader Steinbeck creates is one set apart from the others. Slim walks with a majesty, makes the reader think Slim is above the other ones. Steinbeck also shows the power that Slim possesses when he says the word when he, they, when he says Slim's word is taken on any subject. The final thing the author leaves the reader with in the first impression is that Slim is a humble leader. Steinbeck uses the two characters to show the extremes in the world. Immediately at the first impressions, the reader feels hatred towards Curly, and they admire Slim. The two characters serve as a message to the reader that the world they were living in has wrong and right equally evident. Thank you.